Hey, welcome to the Market Minute for this week. Uh, a couple things in the news. The biggest thing is interest rates yet again. We see the Bank of Canada decided to hold steady on rates. Um, more important than holding steady, meaning they didn't raise prime, the more important thing is that they said there's no indication they're going to. They actually didn't even make an indication what the future projections are. And if we read into this, what I read into it is that there's too much economic uncertainty for them to say one way or another. But I certainly, if I had to predict, I'm going to said, suggest the Bank of Canada is either A, not going to raise rates or even lower interest rates. In the meantime, we've seen a dive on the... Uh, bond yields, which means your long-term fixed rates are now lower than variable rates. Great time to phone up your bank if you're floating on a variable and see if you can lock in. In the meantime, the Americans have decided that we're looking at about one, two, or maybe three rate cuts south of the border. What's interesting is how this is impacting the stock market, how it impacts your decisions when it comes to investing. Here's an article from the Global Mail that talks about the rate cuts may actually trigger a lot of activity into the stock market. The reason for the U.S. Fed to make the rate cuts is to stimulate the economy, which may support the markets even further. Having said that, there's a lot of risk in the market. If you have your RSPs and you'll take a look, I encourage every single one of you to look at your RSPs and ask yourself, how much exposure do I have to the stock markets? Here's an article that talks about the major market risks are calling for a defensive approach. Now, what we're doing at uh, Diversify Alternative Investments is two things. First of all, when we do work with the public markets, I work with Newport Private Wealth or Lonsdale uh, Portfolio Managers, they have a very defensive approach to how they address the market conditions, as is suggested in this article. Uh, what was interesting is rising trade tensions, no deal Brexit scenario are among the reasons to shield your portfolio. The indication here is it's time to take a defensive approach. We've been talking about that for a while. In the meantime, the markets just kind of keep going up after a complete crash in December. So when you start to see over and over and over again, the markets um, keep going in a straight line, it tends to make you think there's something on the horizon that uh, could suggest it's time for correction. And here's an article talking about a balanced portfolio offers calm during volatile times. Given the uncertainty facing equities, it's more important than ever before to prioritize in bonds and cash. Now, what's interesting is this article is talking about the fact that the equities market is poised for a correction. So what should you do? Of course, people who are in the markets have no choice. They, they gotta go from equities to bonds or cash. There is a third alternative and it's called alternative assets that are not correlated to the stock market. That's what we focus on with diversified alternative assets. Examples like AP Capital, um, a mortgage investment corporation which invests in a pool of 200, as of last month, 228 different mortgages, very diversified. They just had the, the distribution that they had in June was the 112th. Listen to that again, 112th consecutive month of 7% per annum or higher. That's 112 months, it's almost 10 years straight where they've paid out at least 7% per annum. So in a time where there's volatile markets, consider a portion of your investments into a non-correlating asset classes. And speaking of which, we focus on things we understand, which is mortgages and real estate. So we have a mortgage fund, Many of you are familiar with Centurion, which is a real estate investment trust. We've just now approved ICM, which is another real, yeah, basically a real estate investment trust. ICM has pooled together two of their funds into their new property uh, partners trust. And uh, again, take a look at some of the numbers here. $815 million of funds under management. They've managed it for 16 years. And in that time, zero investor losses zero losses over 16 years. Again, past performance is no indication of future results. But as a, if you've never lost money for 16 years, eh, that's a good indication of how you run it. Plus a lot of institutional funds, pension funds, um, institutional like banks, etc., cetera, uh, IROC firms are now investing directly into ICM. So that's also a good indication they're doing something right. Folks, all I'm suggesting is that if you have exposure to the public markets, which if you have RSPs and they're in mutual funds, you are 100% exposed to public markets. It's now is the time more important than ever while, you mar while the markets are up 
before they crash, before they correct, to look at just diversifying a little bit in some non-correlating assets. Timing couldn't be better. I encourage you to send me an email if you'd like to do an analysis. Happy to do a gap analysis to analyze your situation, where your investment, what your goals are, what your plans are, and how your current portfolio mix, both real estate and public markets, is working towards that end goal. And if you'd like information, or if you'd like any of the reports we've done on these companies, send me an email. As always, more than happy to send that on to you. In the meantime, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.